I'm deeply honored to present you the keynote speaker, architect Kengokuma-san. Kengokuma was born in 1954. He established Kengokuma and Associates in 1990s. He is currently a university professor and professor emeritus at the University of Tokyo after teaching at Keio University and the University of Tokyo. Kengokuma and Associate projects are currently underway in more than 30 countries. Kengokuma proposes architecture that opens up new relationships between nature, technology, and human beings. So I will waste no more of your time. Maestro Kengokuma-san, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us for this exciting event. And, uh, today, I, I want to talk as about as a the life after COVID, and also the importance of exchange as a, as a, between Lithuania and Japan. And, uh, I want to start from uh, the, this small the box, wooden box. This wooden box is actually as a, designed by Bruno Taut, and as a my father as a bought this wooden box as a 1935 in Tokyo in Ginza okay. and as a, he really loved this wooden box and I heard the story the behind this wooden box and as a, the wooden box is a kind of the symbol of cultural exchange and the Bruno Taut really loved the craftsmanship in Japan. And he worked with Japanese craftsmen as a, to design this beautiful wooden box. As a, as a, um, when I was a boy, uh, I didn't understand the beauty of this wooden box. But uh, after studying architecture, as a, I slowly understand the meaning of this wooden box. The Bruno Taut, so he came to, to Japan in 1933. And it's, he really appreciated the beauty of this Katsura Imperial Villa in Kyoto. And he thought as a, this as a Katsura Villa is a masterpiece of the world. And as a, as a as an episode, it's an interesting episode about him, is when he visited Katsura Villa, 1933, because he, 1933, the Nazis, Nazis, the uh, as a, uh, got, uh, became the uh, government, so 1933, and he uh, should as a escape from Germany to Japan, 1933. And as a, um, May 4th, he arrived in Kyoto. And he visited Katsura Villa because Japanese architects wanted to show him Katsura Villa. And before entering Katsura Villa, he began to cry down when he saw this, the bamboo hedge. He thought, it's an amazing design, he thought. And it is a living bamboo, and behind this hedge, the living bamboo was leaned down like that. And it is a very interesting mixture of nature and artifact. And he began to cry down. And uh, he thought, it is a totally is a new design. It is a traditional design, but he thought it is a totally new design. And also, he was very much as impressed by this bamboo terrace of Katsura Villa. And he wrote, Katsura Villa is a very humble building. It is uh, compared with the, uh, the European palaces. Katsura Villa is a very humble, small building. But 
the beauty of Katsalabila the came from the relationship with nature and artifact. The European desert palaces, it is gorgeous, it is big, but it is, it is separated, independent. Instead, Katsalabila is is showing the relationship between nature and human. And he, he li really loved the, this bamboo terrace. And as, uh, after his visit to Kazala Villa, 1936, he designed a small house in, Ata in Atami. This is a section of his small house. Now actually, the the existing house, and as it is on the cliff to the ocean, Pacific Ocean, he designed this part, and he tried to create relationship. And this is the interior of his house, Hugo House, and he tried to create the relationship. The windows is totally open like that, and uh, and this uh, the raise of the floors is is also to create a unique relationship with uh, nature, and also he designed those unique lighting fixtures made by bamboo and also made by bamboo, the bamboo handrail. And those are also bamboo. He tried to combine the natural element as of his artifact. And I also tried to work with local craftsmen. And, uh, so it is a very unique as a approach in that time. In that time, 1936, the modernism architecture was very active, but as, uh, instead he tried to work with local craftsmen. And as a, and the story was, I designed this house as a, just as next to his house. So this as a, as a pine tree is, 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 is a tree of his, house, his designed house, and I designed this water glass villa. And I tried to learn from Bruno Taut, his approach. The, the, this is the water terrace. It was inspired by bamboo terrace of Katsala Villa, and also inspired by his house, the next door. And as a, I try to combine nature and artifact as possible as can, that try to so avoid the separating wall between nature and art artifact. And they have the co combining the nature and artifact as possible as can, as avoid the border between nature and art artifact. And uh, it is entrance. And as uh, also, I want to show another example of cultural exchange. The, this the building was Hiroshige Museum. The Hiroshige is, is a very famous the artist in 19th century. So ukiyo-e artist. Uh, and ukiyo-e, so it is his ukiyo-e wood, wood block. As uh, 1857, and uh, those of QM, as uh, I want to show you the relationship the, uh, uh, between uh, the, the tam uh, artwork of Western artists and Japanese ukiyo-e painter. This is the evidence of that relationship. This, as a, ukiyo, as a copy of ukiyo-e, was done by Vincent van Gogh in 1887, after, just after 30 years. Just after 30 years, Vincent van Gogh made 
this is a beautiful as a copy of Hiroshige. And the, as the Vincent van Gogh respected Hiroshige very much, and uh, he wrote that I have three mentors. Hiroshige, and Rembrandt, and Cezanne. And this is a very unique combination. There's an Asian artist, Japanese artist, and Rembrandt is from his country, and also Cezanne as his, as his friends. And uh, it shows the influence from Japan to Europe. And as uh, what as a, as a kind of influence? It is about relationship. The Hiroshige as, as a woodblock is showing the relationship. The bridge is a symbol of relationship, nature and artifact. So he, he didn't want to sh uh, separate nature and artifact. He tried to combine nature and artifact. And Vincent van Gogh learned that method, learned that approach. And also another is a great artist learned from Hiroshige. So Frank Lloyd Wright, the American architect, so his lobby house, it is his own rendering. And his rendering was very much influenced by Ukiyo-e method and Hiroshige method. So because Frank Lloyd Wright was a big collector of Hiroshige. He loved Hiroshige and he loved Japan and he has uh, learned the method of Hiroshige. And as uh, this rendering, the, he wants to show the relationship with nature, those nature and as an artifact. And, as, uh, and also uh, after Lobby House, so he came to Japan and he designed this beautiful building. It is an Imperial Hotel. As a, this Imperial Hotel completed 1923, just after the big earthquake. As a, this building survived from big earthquake 1923, and then a, his name became very big in Japan. And as this Imperial Hotel is also the the symbol of exchange, cultural exchange. So he tried to use the local material as possible as can. In that case, the Oya stone. The Oya stone is a kind of volcanic stone. And uh, he tried to use local material as possible as can. And also he tried to work with local craftsmen as possible as can. 1923, that approach was very unique. So 1923, and the Japan, most of the Japanese tried to learn from Europe, tried to bring the modernism to Japan, but instead, he, Frank Lloyd Wright, so want to work with locality, local craftsmanship, local material. So I really, as a, uh, loves his method. And uh, this is the Hiroshige Museum I designed, the same Ukiyo painter. Uh, this Hiroshige Museum, I learned many things from Frank Lloyd Wright and from Hiroshige. So I tried to combine nature and artifact by using local material and working with the local craftsmanship. So this as a void, this hole is very important for this design. This is a hole. And this this is 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 uh, uh, showing the, the relationship with mountain. In Japan, the traditionally the mountain, the edge of the mountain, the people 
was living. The village and mountain is always connected. So why? Because the natural as a resources of mountain was the basis of their life. They didn't want to live um, in the city. The natural resources came from the, the mountain, the material for building, material for furniture, the material for everything came from the mountain. The also, before 20th century, no infrastructure company, no electric company, no gas company, is, uh, and uh, no oil company, is, uh, all the energy came from the mountain. The, the wood of the mountain, as uh, they use for fires and also cooking and everything, is, uh, came from the mountain. And then they really want, wanted to live besides the mountain. And, uh, and also, same time, the mountain should be protected. Because the, if the natural resources mountain disappeared, they couldn't survive. And what they did is build the shrine at the edge of the mountain. Shrine is, a, is the, the very important symbol. Shrine is a, as a taught them, protects the mountain, protects the natural resources. If not, we couldn't survive. And then always they built the shrine at the edge of the mountain. And those mountain was called Satoyama. Satoyama, meaning of Satoyama is a village mountain. The, I love this word, village mountain. It is a mountain, it is a, but it is a part of the village, and uh, it has, a, has a supported the, the life of the village. And then they call it a village mountain. But in 20th century, the sadly, the everything came from big city, the Tokyo. And, uh, and then the Satoyama, the village mountain, was totally forgotten. The every energy, every material, so everything came from big city. And the relation between Satoyama and the village totally disappeared. It is a very sad situation, I think. But as uh, I tried to as, uh, recover the relationship with nature by designing this building. This building is a kind of gate to the mountain. This is a, this is, is, is a hole. This hole is, is a kind of gate, a kind of bridge to mountain. And uh, the, the, by creating this hole, the shrine became the, the part of the village again. So actually, this shrine was forgotten and very much destroyed. But as a, by, uh, by making this hole, I try to recover the relationship between nature and human. And as a, as actually, before designing this as a building, as a mayor of the village, as a want to have the entrance from this side, the parking and entrance. And I, I, I told him, this approach is very American attitude, <laughs> not Japanese attitude. Japanese attitude should be connected with mountain. And the American attitude is connected with parking. <laughs> and as a, I, 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 as a, I want to find that the Japanese way. And as a, also, as I tried to use the local materials possible as can, the wood from the forest behind. And as a, as a long eaves is to create a relationship again with the mountain, 
And as for interior, so, so the use, with, use local material is again, and the work with local craftsmanship. So the, this wool, the material is Japanese rice paper. The local craftsman has produced this beautiful rice paper. And there's a local stone, it's a quarry from the mountain behind. And there's, of course, a boot from mountain behind. As I try to create the juxtaposition of natural material and human. It's just a juxtaposition is the approach, is the basic approach of Hiroshige. Basic approach of Frank Lloyd Wright and basic approach of Vincent van Gogh. And as uh, after designing Hiroshige, I had a project in China. There's a great bamboo wall. This is as a just besides great wall in China. And this is great wall. And this is as my building. As a, and uh, in 2002, as a China, as a, the condition of China was very different. And uh, uh, my concern is China could accept this building. But as a Chinese, as a, but as a, after completion of this building, this building became as a, very famous in China as a, as a because the in Beijing Olympic, as a art producer of Beijing Olympic, did use this building as a for as a, uh, for their as a as a uh, as a opening ceremony of Beijing Olympic, they did use the image of this building for the opening ceremony of Beijing Olympic. And what I did for this building is preserve forest as possible as can, like that. As a, I didn't want to cut the tree. The building was following the topography of the place, like that. And also use the local material, in that case, bamboo. And also, I created the hole again to connect nature and human. This is Great Wall. You can see the silhouette of Great Wall. And this is the hole that took as a combined nature and human. And the entrance. And this is a tea house in the center of the building. And the tea house is, uh, is very important in Asia. Because tea house uh, is a space to feel nature and to taste nature and the, give the spiritual experience. And as uh, and this image is, uh, was used as the Beijing Olympic opening ceremony, and as uh, and I I learned as, uh, how Chinese people loved this kind of space, this kind of tea house. And the, in 2007, the, I designed this small pavilion in Italy. The, after the, uh, the beginning of the 21st century, uh, the, it's such a new trend of using wood for the building. And uh, I want, wanted to show the, the, the the, um, our method to use wood. Traditionally, so we didn't use wood for the decoration. So wood itself is was the structure of the building, and uh, we didn't want to use metal as as possible as can. 
No metal, no glue, also no joint. Wood itself was a joint. And this is a small toy that, that and to create the, this unique joinery. The, this is showing the, the three type of joint to create the, this as a unique as a joinery. The, I asked Japanese carpenters to prepare the, the, those the unit, and as so we brought to Italy, and our student the built this small pavilion by themselves, without any metal and without without any glue, just the wood, just simple wood unit, as a can create this kind of monument. Small monument, but it is, it is important to show our approach to nature and our approach to environment. And after coming back to Japan, I decided to create the real permanent building by the same method. So we worked with the structure engineer, Sato-san, to test uh, the, the, strong, uh, uh, the strongness of this joint. And uh, this is a three-story building by the simple method. This is three-story building. Is there any is there metal structure, is there any, is there without any uh, is a big structure of flame? The small element this small element uh, supported the building. The di and the dimension is very is, uh, that tiny. It is a six centimeters by six centimeters is, is a section of this building. Do we look up the ceiling? And uh, so after that, I also tried to create the bridge by wood. In 20th century, the most of the building, the most of the uh, infrastructures were built by concrete and steel. But before, so we did use wood for those the bridges. The same as in Europe. In so Europe, so there are many of them bridges before 19th century, but in 20th century they disappeared. Uh, this is a wooden bridge I designed for this village. And the wooden bridge is uh, so often covered by the roof to protect wood. And the importance of this wooden bridge is unit is small. So I didn't want to use the big glue lamp beam to support the bridge. The small element, small unit, is a, um, uh, the element of this the big span bu the building. The smallness is important. And for the same village, <laughs> I designed the, this small hotel, so Malaysia Yusuhara, inspired by this thatch as a roof, as a, as a hut. And uh, this was used for the small cafe so in the village. It is small, but as I like the openness of this uh, small hut. This is a, the hotel I designed. The same the material that was used for the facade, thatch. <laughs> and the thatch is also came from the mountain, came from the village. It is important, not from outside. And this is showing the detail of thatch facade. 
And actually, the for insulation, the such is very is a good material. And the insulation and also the control the humidity of the interior. And in that sense, such is a kind of sustainable material. But it's a disappearing. As I could find the old as a classman, he was living there, and he supported this project very much. And as a next project is National Stadium, it is a project project for the, the big city. But as a, I try to as a, bring the same approach to this big building. This is a national stadium. It is a, it's a big in the big city, but luckily we have the forest in that area. And before the showing the, 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 the my national stadium, so I want to show the, some project by Kenzo Tange. So Kenzo Tange, as, a, as a, his debut project is this Hiroshima Peace Center. 1952. So this project is a kind of symbol of recovery from Second World War. Second World War, Japan was very much devastated. It's a, and, it's, and Hiroshima, especially Hiroshima, was destroyed by atomic bomb. And it's a kind of catastrophe. And as uh, what Kenzo Tange did for Hiroshima, is to combine the, uh, na uh, the, the memory of the atomic bomb to the city. The actually, the, this is, is the arch, and the axis is, is below, below this as uh, the arch, and uh, the, the famous uh, the atomic bomb dome was here. Atomic bomb dome as a, was the old building designed by as a, as a, as a Czech architect. It was very much destroyed, but still, as that building was there. The Kenzo Tange want to so focus on that so destroyed building by using arch. By using axes, so by using the, uh, the arch, so he tried to recover the connection. And also, after 1952, he designed this national gymnasium for Tokyo Olympic, 1964. The beauty of this building, Itself is beautiful, but the, he, the, he tried to the create the connection with Mount Fuji. The bit, the, he designed two buildings here. So the, the between two buildings, the, he tried to create axes the, which connect Mount Fuji and city. It is a, I, it is a kind of similar approach to my Hiroshige Museum. The create connection again, nature and the human, by using the method of axis. This is the interior of Kenzo Tangi building. As a, I was very much shocked. I still remember the, my as an encounter of this building, 1964. I was as a ten years old boy. So my father brought me to this building. I was so shocked. The natural light came from heaven, and the natural light as I, uh, looks like connecting nature and human. And, uh, and this is the, the two buildings designed by Kenzo Tanges. As uh, it says, axis exists between two buildings. And the national stadium, stadium as, a, as a, we designed for 2020 Olympic, I a, wanted to learn again from Kenzo Tange. So it's the second Tokyo Olympic, but the age was totally different. 
1964 Olympic, the Japan was in the, the period of economical expansion and uh, the peak of industrialization. But instead, 2020, totally di different as a period, totally different atmosphere. And uh, the economy was uh, not active. The Kenzo Tang is, is a period was economy was always uh, going up. But in 2020, economy was, was is going down, uh, but uh, we should design the symbol of our period. Our period is economically not active, and the few kids and the uh, elderly generation is going up, so we should design the monument of that kind of quiet period. And what is the I as a uh, uh, the land of, from Kenzo Tange is we should design the period. We should design the symbol of the period, but totally different atmosphere, totally opposite atmosphere. And uh, Kenzo Tange is a beautiful design, the monument of concrete, the monument of steel. As a, as a shape wise, it is very dynamic. It is like the tower to the point, the, the heaven, but as instead we try to design the building as low as possible and use the local material as possible as can. Kenzo Tange concrete, so, uh, and so we, we use the wood of 47 prefectures of Japan. And as uh, in Japan, the Traditionally, historically, so we did use local wood for the building. But in the 20th century, so, so we uh, forgotten that method. And as uh, what I want to show uh, in this building is Japan is a, is a country of wood. And also Japan is a country of diversity. If you look from outside, Japan is a small country. There's, a, there's a one tr culture and one tradition as a one character. But a, for Japanese, Japan is not a small country. Yes. A, we have 47 prefectures and a different culture for 47 prefectures and diversity. I want to show. And then I try to use the wood from 47 prefectures. It is not e it was not easy because the, we did test the, the wood from 47 prefectures, and the color was different, and the strength was different, and we tested every as of as a wood from 47 prefectures. And as and also I want to show that that kind of difference. And uh, from this is uh, the uh, South Gate area. Uh, the, for this South Gate, we did use wood from South, the wood from Okinawa. And, uh, the, and uh, the from Okinawa uh, the is more South. And uh, as Kagoshima is, is close to Okinawa, Kumamoto, the dot prefectures. And uh, so this is wood from Okinawa, Kagoshima, Kumamoto, so people can find the, the diversity of Japan. And that is, such diversity is very important in 21st century. And also the, 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 uh, the bringing the, the vegetation from the Tokyo area. The, the Tokyo, in the city, in the big city, still we have this kind of diversity of the vegetation. I want to show that that is a diverse nature in the big city. 
And the section of the building is very important. We inspired by Horyuji Temple. The Horyuji Temple is the uh, oldest wooden building in the world. It was built seventh century, and, but still surviving. So because of this section, as the layers of roofs that are protecting the space beneath, and the people can as a, uh, as a show, as a, as a can, can find the beauty of wood from ground level. Wood is used for soffit of the building. So this is Holyoke Temple, the layers of uh, the, the wooden, uh, uh, wooden soffit, the wooden soffit, and the protected by those, by those the, the roof. It is very an as a Jap Japanese method, I think, to use wood, but to bring the uh, natural breeze, natural wind to the space. This is a very sustainable method, I think. The same method was applied to National Stadium. The bringing natural wind through the gap of roofs, and that's bringing natural vegetation here. And uh, also, the, please check the, the difference of pitch of louvers. That this is dense, this is not so dense. And that this is a difference is to the create the, as a, uh, as a perfect the condition for interior. We try to control the natural wind by changing the gap of uh, the wooden louvers. Using the natural material, using the local material, but to control the, the, uh, the environment. I think this is a very is a futuristic method. This is a traditional method, but at the same time, this is a futuristic method. So this is a new approach after air conditioning, after American method, again. Okay. This is uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a passage on the uh, as on that uh, level of th uh, thirty meters, and, uh, and it, I try to open the building to the city as possible as can. The so normal so a stadium, normal public as a sports building, is uh, was separated from the city, but we try to bring. A, uh, this kind of semi-outdoor space to the city. The people can enjoy this space. As actually, people can as, uh, do the remote work here in the stadium. Stadium is not only for sports. Stadium can be used for remote work after, after COVID. This is a nighttime view of this uh, uh, semi-outdoor space. This is approach as a two stadium, and we was inspired by the fish net. And this is as a, as a inside of the stadium, and again using wood for the structure of the building, and to create a gap to bring natural wind to the as a, as a space, and also again the natural randomness to the, the seats. And as, uh, as you know, the Olympic has a, uh, has a, has held in the period of COVID. And there are no spectators in the stadium. Uh, but because of this uh, randomness, people could feel a uh, full of people <laughs> in the stadium. It is uh, different from the, the other uh, the buildings. Other buildings, the seats are all blue, blue, uh, blue or all red or all white. And uh, no spectators was very visible. But instead, our building was 
looks like full of spectators, <laughs> as I am very lucky, I think. <laughs> yeah, look like full of <laughs> people, <laughs> but actually it's vacant. Uh, so my, uh, but my idea behind this design design is, as a, in 21st century, uh, so less people, so less uh, the audience, is is a basically situation for as a as a building. In 20th century, full of people's always as a f full of spectators. But in 21st century. Uh, in that kind of few kids as an elderly society, the people is going down. So, and uh, that situation is a, as a normal situation in 21st century. We should design the building for that kind of new situation. And as um, the another method to to recover the relationship with nature is respecting topography, so merging the building to topography. This is a project in China. It is a, it is a small as a museum for the Chinese Academy. The location is, is a hill. We try to merge the building to topography of the site. It is a one-story building; is better following the topography like that. And, as, uh, and use the local material so as possible as can. In that case, we did use uh, the recycled roof tile. The Chinese roof tile is, is different from Japanese roof tile. As originally, it's, 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 uh, it's the same as uh, the method, but in China, the steel is just handmade. And uh, that kind of uh, the roughness and uh, the sizes are uh, different, and also colors are different. I love that kind of diversity. And uh, detail wise, so it is not traditional. We combine the stainless wire with the old recycled roof tile to create this kind of effect. The control, the natural light like that. And also building is, a, is always sloping like that. And uh, so we try to bring that method to another project in Asia. In Singapore, uh, so we won the competition of Founders Memorial. The founder is Lee Kuan Yew, so as, uh, as he, he, he was a very important uh, as a politician in Singapore. As, uh, actually, he founded the country, Singapore. And uh, so we try to uh, create the monument merging to environment, not outstanding monument, not separated monument. It is merging to the environment. So because of the Likwan Yu's idea is create garden city. So Singapore now, there are not many skyscrapers like that, but his first idea is create garden city in Asia. This is the, our building. It is merging to the park, like that, like that. And uh, in Europe, also, we also try to also, uh, apply that method. In Paris, so, uh, this is a Saint Denis Player Station in Paris. It is a station, but it is a park for the, the community. The Sandoni Soccer Stadium was uh, 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 just there, uh, not this building, but just there. And uh, we tried to create public space to the city. And also, we tried to uh, the rec recover the connection in the city. 
As in 20th century, the railway, this railway, separated the city, but we tried to recover the connection again for the city. And we tried to recover the, the green in the city. And inside, we tried to use wood for the station. It is a big challenge because normal station, they don't want to use wood. But as uh, I tried to bring nature to the city, and as uh, uh, we uh, had a big battle with the client, but as uh, finally, as a, uh, we we can use wood for the interior of the building. And uh, the next project is about the recovery from disasters of earthquake and tsunami. And uh, in 2011, so we had a big earthquake and tsunami in up north area. Uh, we are asked to design as a, to design the master plan for Minami Sanriku the, the town, and uh, it was the, the destroyed t town. As a, it used to be the center of the town, but every building were were destroyed like that. And as our master plan is to recover the connection to the, the, the Pacific Ocean. And as the first idea as of, of the mayor of the town is was to create a big shopping center. But as I, did, I didn't like that big shopping center in the small town. The small shops and the street but the street is always facing to the ocean, and that is important, we think. And uh, this is our first master plan, and uh, this uh, was designed as a, based on my master plan. The street, the intimate human street, is uh, going to the old Pacific Ocean, and the people always can feel Pacific Ocean. It is important for a town. Not separated from nature, always the, uh, the connected with nature is important. And use the local material as possible as can, and also the, to create that kind of semi outdoor space. In Japan, that kind of semi outdoor space is called Engawa space. The Engawa space is between exterior and interior. It is most intimate space. People always can feel nature in Engawa space. I try to recover that kind of Engawa space. And the daytime like that, that this kind of casual feeling has happened in this Engawa space. And Pacific Ocean is always there. This is a level view. And uh, and after uh, the, uh, the completion of this building, so we designed the bridge. The bridge is also can be the symbol of connection with nature. And uh, this bridge is directing the shrine on the hill. This is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the composite structure of the bridge. Uh, combined with wood and steel, like that. And uh, they're directing to the shrine on the hill. And also, this is the, uh, has a unique uh, the, uh, the section. The upper bridge is to see the Pacific Ocean. And the lower bridge is to uh, the, uh, see the uh, river side, to the river. And the two different experiences uh, the, are connected in the bridge. And after the bridge, the, uh, the we designed this memorial building. This is just as completed last month, 
and I didn't have a good image of the as a building, but as a bridge and a human street and uh, this monument. And as again, as we designed the hall to connect the human and nature, and this is a view from bridge, interior, and uh, also we worked with Voltansky as an artist, as a, and the Voltansky designed the beautiful the room, but he passed away last year, as a, before on the completion of the building. And uh, in the last, so I want to show the small buildings. And the small buildings is all very important in 21st century. This is a small building I designed. It is a trailer. It's a kind of a trailer. The, the trailer itself is a very American so the, the, uh, the invention. But the trailer in America is made by industrial material, steel and aluminum, glass. So I don't like that kind of industrial material. So instead, I, design, I use the local material for the, the trailer. And uh, so I, I also try to create a very intimate relationship with the environment. The, those tables is, is to connect nature and human. And the interior, by using wood, so the atmosphere has changed a lot. Those, this is the interior. And uh, so people are very much <laughs> surprised to see that this uh, so wooden volume in the city. And uh, this is a temporary restaurant I designed in the center of Tokyo. Even in the center of Tokyo, the wood, natural material, can change the atmosphere of the place. This is interior. The small bar in that case, and the people enjoy the life in food. And uh, as the last, I want to show the smallest project we designed. It is a tsumiki. Wood, tsumiki means wood block. So I want to show the new method by designing this wood block. So we worked with Ryuichi Sakamoto, famous composers, and he is also very active to recover the Japanese forest. And he asked me to design a new type of wood block. And the wood block is in Europe is actually came from the idea of masonry. It's a kind of is a uh, as uh, a brick and stone, as a, and the method is and the, the, to assemble that kind of uh, as, a, as a volume. But as a, what as I did for Tsumiki, the wood block is not stacking. The, 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 it's a kind of urban structure by wood. And the Japanese wooden building is a kind of urban structure by wood. This is not stacking. By stacking, as a building become very solid, very rigid, very heavy. But by weaving, the building become very light and transparent. It's a totally the opposite method. And uh, by using as a, this as a transparent unit, so we can create as a many as a, a type of transparency. The secret of this as a, as a unit is this joint. And at this point is a weak point of this structure, but we add the very tiny, the strong wood, the piece for the joint. By adding that unit, so we can create is a new type of wooden block. In 21st century, the openness is very important. And the 
Natural material is important, but still, so we need design. Still, so we should do some invention. And uh, the cultural exchange is, is very important for creating new method. And this event, the cultural exchange between, between Lithuania and Japan, can be the big chance to as I invent that kind of new method. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kyungokuma san. I think we still have some time for uh, questions. So if you have uh, questions, just raise your hand and we will come up with a microphone. And I will come up, if, if I may, with the first question. Uh, your projects offer kind of ge very generous spaces, and in most cases, very nice visual relationship with the environment, which is nature. But what could you offer to those environments that are really densely inhabited, and also, you know, when you look through the window, you see nothing, just the window of your neighbor, or even worse, some backyard of some industrial site. So what, how your principles could be applied to more hostile context? Yeah, yeah. in that kind of dense environment, still, so we can bring wind, still we can bring natural light to the space. As a, as a, traditionally, the Japanese city, is a, uh, the street was very narrow. The, you know, the, the street of Kyoto is very, very, very narrow. But still, so we can live with nature and live with wind and natural light. And as a, by controlling the relationship. And uh, it is very possible. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, my next question, in fact, would would have gone to the audience. Are there any fire protection officers here? <laughs> no, there are not. So, well, I have to keep my question back because, you know, the projects that you showed to us, I would say that legally they are quite impossible in, in our country yet. But I think that if you come to any foreign country, mainly, you know, they say this is impossible. Yeah, to build in the wood. Yeah, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the situation has changed after uh, the 2000. And uh, the Hiroshige Museum I showed uh, at the beginning, the wood is all uh, the fire protected by the new treatment. And uh, the, uh, the, it is a new technology. And uh, as a French station, as a Saint Denis station, also we did use the Fire, fire protected the wood. Uh, and the regulations are, 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 are different as, uh, for each country. And actually, the French regulation as, uh, is not so strict as Japan. Um, but as, but as, uh, we can find a way to protect wood from fire. <laughs> Thank you. And just maybe you have uh, some questions um, and the audience. I'm just I asking if just there's your uh, hand. any hands uh, for a question. <laughs> have, well, okay. Okay, Mr. Kuma, uh, actually you're doing a uh, huge project and also, as we see, very small things. So like, <laughs> yeah, like box on the wheels and other things. Uh, why you are doing so small things? Uh, it's for yourself or for some client? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I really love to do, do the small project. The big project is, is uh, as uh, many people are joining the project, as a uh, as a uh, as a business people or as a government as uh, some officers. As a, it's just very complicated to work with those so big big people. But as a small project, as we can design by ourselves, is it's much easier, and, uh, and as a, without constraints, we can design small things. So for the wood block, we we worked with just with Sak, Ryuji Sakamoto. It is, I like that kind of collaboration. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, well, okay, 
I see a hand. Can you, uh, we, we discussed with colleagues, it's not polite in the middle of your, you know, lecture. Uh, but we call you uh, the master of Azure. I know Azure. Uh, it's not the right word. I don't uh, know what kind of uh, word do you use in Japan. But really, this your partitions. We were discussing about that 20 years ago here in Konas. Yes. And you told that the main difference between you and Tadawa Ando <laughs> is that you uh, don't put heavy uh, partitions, heavy walls, because it's you know European way of thinking. And you say that next time you will show your azures. Uh, so how do you call in Japan? How it is called this transparent wooden walls? Uh, yes, uh, as a, as a as a Tado Ando's uh, as a son, Tado Ando son is, I respect it a lot. As a, as a, as a, he also as a, uh, as very much inspired of Japanese from Japanese tradition, the simpleness and the minimal mi, mi, minimalism, and as a, uh, and he did use natural light beautifully. This is a, I, I as a learned from many things from him, but as a. What I try to do is, uh, is to create the, the, the soft relationship with the environment. The screens, as a, traditionally, the screen was very, very important as an as a, as a, as a element the, to control the relationship is because of density. So Japanese cities uh, were dense. Because Japan, it came from the, the condition of Japan, the special condition of Japan. That there are many mountains, there are no flat land, and we should live in the limited area. And then the Tokyo, the Kyoto, the, the, this is a big population, but in the small area. And that we should control the density. And as a bike for controlling the density, so we, it, and, uh, developed as a, the technique of as a screen, and as many type of screens, and it is very as a soft. For example, we did use rice paper for the the separation between exterior and interior, and surprisingly, the before the glass as a, came to Japan, we only separate exterior and interior by thin paper. The thin paper is just papers. It is separation. And if the, as a strong rainy day, the, as a, we close by wooden sliding door, the, but normal day, we didn't use that kind of separation. Just thin rice paper. And, uh, I, I think this is a very avant-garde. As a <laughs> and, uh, and as a, I, I, I designed a small building so by this kind of separation. I didn't use glass for that building, just a paper. And the, and the client was, was very generous, and as a, as a, as a, and I could use that method. So, but it is very uh, exceptional in Japan, more than this. Okay. Um, maybe I, I can continue on this wood question. Mm -hmm. Uh, often with wood is uh, when you talk with a client or, or anybody else uh, saying that oh, maybe we need, we need to use wood in a facade or some details or construction. Uh, often the problem is that it it's not really a problem, but uh, i just interested what is your answer to the situation that wood has to be treated more, it has to be taken care of more, and somehow it uh, needs more labor than let's say concrete and so on. So, and how would you answer then to those people who say, "Oh, well, let's continue building from concrete because you know we build it 50 years, we forget it, and wood we need like every 10 years to treat it again." Yeah, yeah. I think that kind of the maintenance that is, uh, is not bad for the community. So by doing the maintenance, 
the people can be connected with the building, and uh, the people uh, cannot forget the building. It is important. Uh, this is um, uh, it's the same as is the uh, ECH lines method. ECH lines uh, they built the new building every twenty years. It is is a kind of a continuous maintenance for the building, and every twenty years, the as a craftsman uh, can work again, and so and uh, this as a can give us a continuity of craftsmanship to the building. As a, and the building, as a completion of the building is not the final completion. It is a, it is a part of the continuous maintenance. Uh, it is a, just a starting point. Uh, are there, okay, I see one hand. Uh, um, Mr. Kuma, I'd like to know what kind of house you live in and whether it's <laughs> one, whether it's one you designed yourself. As a, actually, as a, my house was designed by my wife. <laughs> as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, if I design something for my wife, as, a, as a, always many claims are <laughs> can, can come. <laughs> and I try to avoid that kind of claim, and uh, that, and she designed the house for my, for, me, for us. Hello, I want to ask, which of your own projects the most dearest to you, or the one that you like the most that you enjoy to create? Ah, uh, yeah, this is, this is always a very difficult question. Is, uh, if I pick up one, the, the, the clients of other projects uh, claim me. <laughs> and, uh, the perfect answer for this uh, question is the answer by Frank Lloyd Wright, the next project. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Ken Gokuma, I would also like to refer to the discussion that we had today, and especially during the second session, the architects were debating uh, whether uh, contemporary architects should somehow react on the uh, climate crisis that we have right now. And uh, somehow looking at your buildings and your advocacy for wooden architecture, it seems that you are so on that wave of sustainability, but is it a coincidence or are you part of that sustainability movement by choice? Yes, yeah, so, uh, I think as an as architect as a, as a should feel the atmosphere of the, of the period. The, the sometimes as a uh, as a uh, the atmosphere of the, the, the period is it's not so un uh, it's not so comfortable for us for designers, but as uh, anyway, as uh, we as uh, should feel the air of the world, and uh, the sustainability is very important. As uh, I learned many things from sustainability and as, uh, as, uh, as uh, from those researches and those studies, but, uh, but I tried to as a uh, as a create the something from sustainability, not following the sustainability, but create create something is important. Thank you. Uh, any other hands? No. Then maybe I have I don't know one maybe final question. One more question, and then I will have a proposal. Okay. One final question about <laughs> the future. Uh, in the beginning of your career, of course you worked with wood, but then you designed the glass house, and then there was experimentation, maybe period in glass. There were some also concrete, now it's wood. Is there a hint of maybe something else? Like I know that you're working with, with fabrics a lot. Uh, yes, it's fabric. Is I try to, so I have been trying to create softness in architecture, and the concrete and steel is, is a very hard material. And the hard material, is a, is our, our body is not hard at all. It's a very fragile, it's a very it's a soft. But as a, 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 a most of the building in 20th century was too solid, too hard. And I, I tried to create the softness. For example, a soft tent or something. 
the, and the, the Japanese house is a good example. It's a rice paper. It is very soft. And tatami mat is also very soft. So I tried to find that kind of the approach to softness. And we did do the, uh, some new approach by the, by the softness. And I, I worked with a fashion designer to collaborate to create the new type of softness. And, then so, and the, actually, f the fabric, uh, the, the, the jacket, I, uh, this is my design, actually. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, and the inspired by Japanese sashiko method. And uh, these patterns, as we call it sashiko, in up north area, as, uh, uh, they invented that method. Uh, I, I, I can learn many things from those public. So I think that we owe a very big applause to our keynote speaker, Kengoku Masan.